Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Buds and Beads Sparkling and Loose Leaf Teas. The kettle's boiled, Vic. Great. Perfect timing. Just a dash of milk for me, please, mate. Here you go. Shall we get started, then? Have you ever woken up on a Sunday morning and said, I'm never drinking again, and then found yourself waving 50 bucks at a barman by happy hour? Are you wondering why everyone else can stop at one while you head to a dodgy after party with a weird bloke called Disco Dave? If so, it might be time to take a deeper look at your relationship with your reliable social crutch, alcohol. On each episode, we'll investigate our own dysfunctional dealings with booze and find out if it's possible to stop this deeply ingrained habit before things get too messy. Yep, we're going to open up a shame shed of humiliating drinking stories to help you understand why waking up from a booze coma each weekend with a kebab sticking out of your top pocket might actually be negatively impacting your health. Hamish and I are here to delve into what it's like being sober, an unwanted warts and all look into why giving up those cheeky pints or putting down those mummy wines will make you feel happier, help your anxiety and mental health and turn you into the most sparkly authentic version of you. Won't that mean I become boring though, Vic? Well, Hamish, we'll just have to wait and see. I'm Victoria Vanstone. I'm Hamish Adams Cairns. And this is Sober Awkward. So, just a little insight. What? Vic had to kneel down to um, pop in a light. (laughs) And she's gone, oh, I hate this shit. Oh, I thought something's on her mind while she's kneeling down. said, what? She goes, you know, kneeling down. (laughs) What? Oh, you know, just sometimes there's a certain position. It's like when you're trying to get a plug in, which I was trying to do, or just certain leaning down from a height to get down to something but low, I thought, leaning, that makes your face go red. You know that I sort of leaning? I thought it was like, oh, like because you have a bad back or because no. your knee's being like a reason, <laughs> not just my least. The thing that really gets me fired up is kneeling down. Yeah, leaning <laughs> and kneeling, my two worst things. Oh, I had the worst day yesterday, I had to kneel three times. Oh, I had to bend <laughs> over and put a fucking plug in yet again. I don't think anything gets me quite as upset as you've just demonstrated kneeling down does. <laughs> you need it's to write a poem worst. about yeah, that. Yeah, I will. I'll write a yeah. poem for you if about you that. Yeah, if I'll try. Could. Oh, dear. How do you have a good week? So, actually, you know what? I should start with this. I rarely have bad days. Okay. Rarely. I'm yep. very lucky. I'm a generally average to happy guy. Yeah. Yesterday, miserable day. Oh, God. And do you know what's worse about your miserable day, Hamish? I, I was texting you questions. You were active. Incessant. I was incessant. I had no idea that you were feeling like that. And I was like, right, so we've got to do this. And then we've got to do this. And what do you think about this? I did. I just put oh, my God. notifications off. Oh, my God. You I'm so certain. sorry. No. Well, I, I, I didn't is, know, though. I didn't know. This is it. This is this is why I'm decided to share this on the podcast today is because I think some people will be like me when they have bad days and they don't tell anyone. So I could have texted you early in the day. And like, you should have done. No, none of this, please. Yep. Let's talk about this on Monday. I also didn't really properly communicate it to Liz. Right. So she was like, you are not fun to hang out with today. I'm moody. Because I, well, I wasn't moody. I was just mute. So oh, I just dear. didn't, you know, we went to the market. I just, I just sort of, so, so I guess, just like sulked at the back with the um, <laughs> Sulky. So she was like, you're not fun to be with. And that's obviously the worst thing to say to somebody who's having a bad day. Yeah. So eventually I sort of, I was like, I don't know why. I just feel bad. And she was great. She goes, all right, you go away yeah. and go for a swim or go for a run or go for a surf. Just be away from this house and move mm. and see if that helps. And it and it did work, but not for the rest of the day. I think you assume, oh, I'll just eat well and I'll go for a run and then I'll feel great for the rest of the day. And it didn't have long-term lasting effects okay. for me. The one thing that did cheer me up was I had this cuppa 
meet up. So what we're doing, I don't know if you know about it, guys, but what we're doing once a month is we are going to hop on Cuppa and you'll either have half an hour talking to Vic or half an hour talking to me. Anyone can join the chat. There was 25 people on it last night. You can ask questions or suggest podcast ideas or whatever. Anyway, that really cheered me up because it's a bit weird because it's basically just us talking to ourselves and people yeah. typing questions. It's not really a conversation. It's voyeuristic, isn't it? It's a bit odd. Yeah. And it's, it's weird that that's what cheered me up was basically yeah. just talking at myself for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. But it got, I went on some weird tangents and it got quite funny. We talked about whether or not um, there's anything which is too weird to iron. Right. My mum irons pajamas, <laughs> yeah, and Liz and thinks that is a psychopathic behaviour. Like, what, what, what you wear it to go to bed? Like it gets creased in the night. And she she irons bed sheets. Right. Again, like the consensus on the chat last night was that is psychopathic behaviour. Okay. And then the other thing I shared with people, I don't think I've, I think you're into this as well. I call it house porn. Okay. So if mm. you live, you live near the beach, or if you live on a coastal path, or if you live in a fancy part of town, or we do it when we go on holiday, um, you go house porn viewing. So yes. you choose the fanciest part of town, often coastal, and you walk, go for a walk and look at the best houses and daydream. Yeah. The full sentence that we use is, get the lube, we're going to do some house porn. <laughs> <laughs> and there were a few people that hadn't labelled that house porn, but they're like, we definitely do that as well. I do that. Okay. I did it very recently at did Sunshine you? Beach. I went for that coastal walk with my son George yeah. and we were cruising round the back streets. I wouldn't use the phrase house porn yeah. with a 12 year I didn't, I didn't, no. <laughs> I didn't say that, no. <laughs> anyway, so yes. But you're feeling better today. I'm feeling much better. Yes. Something the Cuppa community lifted me back up and then England played cricket and won last night okay so that's, that's good all I'll mention about the cricket today I went into a slight mental spiral when I realised okay. you'd had a bad day and I'd been texting you all day oh no see this is my <laughs> fault I could have I could have put you out of your misery my people pleaser ways were affected because I was like oh my god I had literally been asking him questions all day and you know I just do it when it comes into my brain because I forget about it and I need to be more conscious that it was a Sunday and that you're not working and you're with your family so I do apologise for that what is not your fault <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same as Liz blamed herself I was like yeah. oh god it's it's not you no it's, but I don't want you to feel horrible it must have been very annoying and I know that I'm annoying sometimes <sighs> sorry about that sometimes all yeah. the time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so today we're going to have a little chat about this term party animal. We're talking about the passed out, red wine teeth, dribbling, feather boa, minor drug use issues. Party girl sounds cool and sounds glamorous and sounds like she's the fun one. Yeah. And the reality is often quite far from that. It is. It really is. So the reason I wanted to do this episode today, Hamish, is because I had a bit of a confronting experience recently, which okay. I'll quickly tell you about. My friends and I, my Brighton mates, we have a WhatsApp group. OK, so we send old photos if they come up. Mm -hmm. We share funny stories and memories that we used to get up to. And they're still like a really good group of my mates, the flies, because we're like oh, flies yeah. round shit if someone has cocaine. <laughs> we used to be. Is now we're like flies round shit if someone's got kombucha. Yeah, or, or soda water. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it called the flies? The WhatsApp group? No, yeah, it's called the flies. Yes. The WhatsApp group. Yes, right. yeah. So we were sharing some old photos. Those days were very debaucherous, and we used to get up to all sorts of shit, recreational drug use, and promiscuity. All of those things. And I always look back on those days and think it was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. And I got good stories from it, and I got good mates from it, and it's all good. But my friends shared a picture of me. And I'm usually okay with seeing pictures of me drunk. I just think, oh God, that was just a bit of a lost it girl. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. I just think it's funny. But there was this one picture that made me upset. Wow. So what it was, I'll show it to you in a minute. I'm not sure that I will share it with Instagram. No, I don't have to. I don't have to share it with anyone no. really. But I can describe it to you. Okay. So it was a picture of me hovering over a toilet mm -hmm. with my knickers down. Sure. Um, with a, my skirt pulled up. I am sort of like, sort of look unbalanced. I've got those black shark eyes. Mm -hmm. The lights are on and no one's home. I've got a monkey sewn to my shoulder. A, a stuffed toy that I used to go out with sewn to my shoulder. I don't know why. Yeah. Did, did you remember that or did it? I remember sewing okay. it onto the shirt and thinking this is funny that I'm going to go out and have this monkey sewn on. That is, that is funny. It was funny, yeah. but, but it was probably a bit odd. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the photo, I look so unwell. Mm -hmm. I look deranged. Completely deranged. Do you know where or when it was? I remember it was at a house party. I think it was the house party where I set myself on fire when I put a cigarette in my top pocket. Yes. And, the, and I think it was then. Yep. And I just look absolutely 
unwell like I've never seen myself look and it was really confronting I look pale I look ill I look off my head on drugs Mm -hmm. and I just looked at it and went oh my god I didn't realize I thought I was fun in that moment Mm -hmm. I thought that was funny and it is not and I realize that now it wasn't funny it was somebody that was completely hurt completely out of control somebody that was sad and didn't know who they were somebody that was basically lost but that had become my identity and it was expected of me so that's what we're going to talk about today is that label of party girl and how it becomes your identity and how you lose yourself in that in some way so when you say that photo was confronting today do you mean it in as far as it made you feel sorry for the person you were there or upset that your friends weren't stepping in and going you need a hand this isn't cool no I wasn't upset with them at all I was upset that I didn't take care of myself that I didn't know what I was doing was wrong and I felt very very sad I cried I was so upset to see how damaged I looked and I'm sure I, it was quite frivolous. It just happened to be that photo was a time and place where I looked on. Well, I'm sure I didn't look like that all the time, mm-hmm. but it represented to me a person that wasn't mentally all there. Well, our memories are probably slightly more forgiving than mm. the photographs. We both say we're lucky that we were pissheads when we were, because if you're a pisshead today, there's going to be tens of thousands yeah. more photos than there were of us. And that, you know, this situation will repeat in 10, 15 years and people will be yeah. pretty confronted with their Facebook pages or Instagram pages. I wonder if people nowadays don't take their phones out with them when they know they're going to get really drunk. Or I suppose other people other always people have phones. Will, yeah. yeah, you're stuffed. I know. So like me, have you ever been lost? I think I was. And found yourself questioning who you are and your role in society. I don't think Hamish, I knew what I was doing in those days. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any focus or purpose. And therefore, I just drank because that's the only thing that gave me a sort of identity. Are you fed up with being pointed out as the party animal and find yourself acting out in ways that you don't want just because of a reputation? This kind of contemplation is actually only natural and everyone deals with these existential questions occasionally to reassess or confirm their perception of themselves. Especially when you're thinking about giving up alcohol. After all, a person's subjective sense of self is an essential factor that guides the way we carry ourselves, who we associate with and how they make certain decisions. So what happens when we lose sight of who we really are? If you're listening to this podcast, alcohol may have drowned out the real you, leaving you asking what lies beneath. I also recently did an interview with the Sydney Morning Herald about being a party girl, Hamish. Yes, I read it. Yeah, and when I reflected on my past in preparation for it, I realised a lot of my drinking stemmed from my reputation as being a party animal or a party girl. The one that propped up the vibe and knew the location of every after party... This status became expected of me. I thought that's who people wanted, so I was happy to oblige. For years, actually, I carried on drinking because without this distinctive identity, I did not know who I was. And if I didn't have this identity, what was left over? I was worried the me without booze wasn't very important. My drinking persona became everything. It was who I was completely. It's weird, isn't it? Because now I feel like your identity is... Mrs. Sober. Yeah, the like, opposite. It's still related to drinking, yeah. but it's the other side of the, the, the jigsaw. Jigsaw? The other side, I want to say. The other side of the jigsaw would be very f- difficult to do. <laughs> There's a challenge. There's a challenge. That's your sober challenge for the day. Do the Can't other side of a jigsaw. I was thinking the other side of the seesaw. I think even that's a weird. I don't even think that's a saying. That's not a saying. The other side of the... Oh, they're shouting at oh, us again. The other side of the tile? Sure. The other side of the picture? Yeah, let's The go bigger picture? Let's go. Let's <laughs> the go. other side of the story? Yeah. Yes, something like that. That's, Carry on. But anyway, what I'm saying is, yeah, your identity now is very much Mrs. Sober and it yes. used to be Mrs. Party Animal. Yes. For me, it's interesting to hear you say it because I know that you see yourself as the opposite. It's a bit sad it took so long for you to reveal who you really are underneath all that booze. Weirdly, I actually see you as a party girl. Oh, really? I do, but in a positive, sober way. Okay, good. That what exists. What I mean by that is you host all the parties. Mm-hmm. You throw a fantastic party. Mm, thanks. You still love dancing. You still love music. True. You still love going out. Yep. Like All of those things are what a party animal does or what a party girl or a party boy does. I guess the only thing that isn't happening is the booze and the drugs. Yeah. I think, you you know, when I hear party boy or party girl or party person or party animal, 
really I'm thinking drugs as much as I'm thinking booze. Yes. Um, and you're obviously none of those things. So I don't know, actually, if that label, me saying you're a party animal... <laughs> Animal, animal sounds worse than party cow, doesn't it? Yeah. It does sound worse. But if, I don't want it to be a trigger for you because I also know that you love staying in and drinking tea and yeah. all of the things that very much aren't <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. But I think there is such thing as a positive, sober party animal, okay. which is how I see you. That's kind of our message on this podcast, isn't it? Is to it. be a sober party animal. Yes. Yeah. Or just be content with staying in and drinking tea. Yes. But <laughs> yeah. I think maybe what we need to do I don't think we can achieve it over the course of one podcast. Okay. But what we need to do is reframe what party animal means. Yeah. Because if you're, if you used to be one, now you think, oh, I'm boring now because I'm sober. I'll never be the party animal ever again. Mm. I think you can be. Oh. And so Sandy agrees. Sandy, the Sandy the dog's having her own wild party Sandy in the lounge. Agrees. Sandy agrees. The postman's arrived. They're She's having gone, a rave up. Here, here, in dog language. <laughs> Oh, bloody Sandy. He's always interrupting our podcast, isn't I she? I think we always talk about it when she barks, and yeah. I reckon none of it comes from Nobody can hear. <laughs> People will think it's like a sign that we say... It's an invisible dog. Today, we're going to take a look at party animals. Sometimes drinkers have no idea who lies beneath all that ethanol and can't stop because they're scared the person underneath it won't be someone they want to be or someone their mates will like. Yep, sobriety is getting to know a stranger. You go very quickly from being the one that brings the party to the one that leaves the party. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's a strange concept to never drink again. And what will you do at weekends? What's left over once the party has ended? It's scary. So people don't try it. The party continues until eventually there's a serious health impact. Today we want to reach the party girls and guys, the last one standing sort of drinkers, life and souls, and the three-day bender instigators. <laughs> Basically, anyone who feels like drinking is part of their identity, and anyone that has a reputation that feels so all-consuming. You can't quite bear to let it go. So if you're a party person that has secretly had enough, yet can't stop because you don't know who you are without booze pumping through your bloodstream... This is the episode for you. That sounds like a corny TV ad to me, Vic. Like, like an insurance claim. Yeah, it does you know? yeah. Are you a party animal? You yeah. don't know how to give it up? <laughs> Just cool. Sober awkward. Yeah. This episode is going to go deep, Vic. I can feel it down in my plums. <laughs> I you'd like that. Did you add that in? Yeah, I did, yeah. I love your plums comment. <laughs> I don't love your plums. I like your plums comment. I love any reference to fruit and veg in it's, our podcast. That's your comedy niche. And woodland animals. Yes, For like example? squirrels and ferrets and things. I like to mention them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I love digging up all the truths about why we drink. We get trapped in a mindset of it being something we have to do. And our reputations mean we keep heading to the bar thinking there is no other way of socialising. Yeah, we get trapped like a rabbit in a snare. Oh, I can feel as we're going to take this too far, this episode. <laughs> but of course we know, Hamish, there is another way. But it's not easy to pull back the curtain on something that has been fueling our personalities for so long. Let's work it all out, Hame, and find out how you can leave the party animal in the past and know it's the best decision you will ever make. Yes. So let's begin with the definition of a party animal. The one we've got here is a person who enjoys going to parties and drinking a lot of alcohol and behaving in a loud and wild way. Yeah, wild way. I guess yeah. that's why it's an animal. Another one is a young woman who enjoys parties. That's party girl. What do you think about these two terms, these two definitions for party animal? I think it sounds very innocent, these terms. It mm -hmm. sounds very frivolous and fun. Just someone that enjoys a night out, that likes being entertaining. It's a bit of fun. But for me, having been labelled this term in the past, it meant more. It normalised my overindulgence yeah. and it took away the seriousness of what I was doing to my body every weekend. It allowed me to carry on and pass off my behaviour as just being a laugh. I feel the same when people go, oh, they like a drink. Like, they like, like a drink is a throwaway comment. Mm. And when everyone makes that about someone, I'm like, oh, they get drunk often. Yeah. What you're saying there is they'll get drunk often. If you want to get drunk, they're the person to call. Yeah, which which I thought was good. Yeah. That's how messed up my brain is. But yeah, they like a drink is too innocent. It, like even they, party girl, it's very innocent. It's very, yeah. ha, 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 look at her. What a laugh. But well, I think party girl is like when you're a teenager and in your 20s, oh, great, they're a party girl. That's, that's fun. 
Yeah. And then like your 30s and 40s and plus, and like, oh, you're a party girl. Like, yeah, right. Only, Stop doing shouldn't that. Shouldn't you be getting them life? Yeah. We're going to have a bit of a, a chat about maturity in a minute because I think that is an interesting point, Hamish. I totally agree. It can be harmful, these labels, can't they? Mm-hmm. That term, party animal, it can be harmful because it suggests that they're nothing more than that. And I don't know whether I was more than that at that stage in my life, quite honestly. I don't think the term really encapsulate what might be actually going on, that perhaps it's actually someone who can't stop or has an issue or is a people pleaser or has trauma. If we look deeper into those terms, a reputation can lead to addiction if that term can't be shaken off. I also think of a party girl or a party animal as someone who's strong-willed, assured, relentlessly optimistic. Yeah, that's true. They've got like the magic ability to take the most negative situation and make the best out of it and infect everyone around them with positive energy. Yeah. They're the person you call when you're having a boring or bad day and yeah. they can turn it around for you. The party girl is an extremely agreeable person as well. It's not all bad. They might also be what everyone needs on on such a day. But even that statement there, Hamish, that you've just made, it might be what everyone else needs. Yeah, true. So they're, they're, you're taking away the needs of the person. There's a real people pleasery yeah. feel to that, isn't there? So actually a, a, a party girl might be cheering everybody else up but they're actually hurting themselves yeah. at the same well, time. it could be someone that you use, really. Yeah. So I'm miserable, I'll call Vic, yeah. and I'll use her to make myself happy, yeah. and then they have to deal with the consequences of yeah. a hangover or yeah. like mental health issues, whatever it is. Yes, yeah, so you don't think about it. Oh, they cheer me up, I'll go out with that person, they cheer me up. But actually, how does that affect that person? Yeah, it's, it's, good point. it's hard, yeah. So let's start the podcast by hearing about the good and bad bits. Oh, we've only just started. We're already 20 oh, minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> we've been warbling. So welcome to the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, these guys take a while to get going, don't they? <laughs> no, let's, let's start talking about the good bits, actually. Just the good bits about being a party animal. Well, I thought it gave me sort of social kudos. Okay. I thought somebody calling me the party girl was actually a compliment. And that I was happy to have that persona. It led to some weird things, of course, which we'll talk about later. But I thought it was funny and cool to drink more than everybody else. Like, I remember waking up with a guy once and he dared me to drink out of a bottle of vodka at like 7am. Mm. And I just swigged it out of the bottle thinking it was funny. Yeah. I still cringe about that moment now mm-hmm. because that was my brain. I thought, oh, look at me, I'm funny. He probably thought, you're fucking mental, love. He dared me to do it because he thought it was funny. So there we are again. I was doing it to please someone else. Yeah. And he did think it was funny. And I thought, oh, he likes me more. I never saw him again, of he course. He would have bragged to his mates. This mental, yeah, this yeah, girl, yeah. She, uh, you wouldn't believe what she did. Yeah. I still cringe about that now. It makes me blush even thinking mm-hmm. about it. People never knew me as anyone different. And I made it clear when you met me or at the start of any relationship that I was here to party. I never showed an interest in anything else. If booze was involved, I showed up. I liked making people drunk. I liked instigating it. I liked changing people's personalities with it. I was there to show them like this is what fun is because that's Mm -hmm. all I knew. I made people drink because that made me more comfortable within myself. And I liked creating a party where there was boring. So if there was a situation... I was like a professional cheerer upper and I'd go, here you go, this is boring, whatever you're doing. Here's a bottle of Pims, ice and a slice, let's go. Yeah. I was always bringing it, bringing it to cheer everybody up like a responsibility because of my persona. The challenge, I guess, is being that person in your sobriety. Yes. Because anyone can step into a situation of boredom or your mates being down and can yeah. come with booze and big energy and yeah. can help turn that situation around. Yeah. But... But very hard to do that sober. Very yeah. hard to be like, hey, yeah. like I'm here with big energy. Let's yeah. turn around this day without going. I've got loads of fizzy water. Yeah. I've got cordial. Yeah, it's <laughs> difficult, isn't it? Everyone just be like, oh, my God. I mean, anyone can make, you know, if you turn up with loads of drugs and booze. Yeah. Sure. People are like, people are in a better mood after doing loads of drugs. Right? Yeah. Very difficult to do that with elderflower. Very, very difficult. Very hard. Yeah. What about you, Hamish? What did you like about being a bit of a party boy? Okay, so I would say that I was not a party boy in the conventional sense. What I mean by that is I reckon most of my time... I was not a party boy. I was a normal boy. <laughs> normal boy. Normal boy. Normal, a little, wooden boy. A little, normal a boy. little wooden boy. Little, when I told, Pinocchio. When I told lies, my nose got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh, you were Pinocchio <laughs> yeah, as a child. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Um, but yeah, because I was sort of 
like I've said before, I was, like, I was the mid-range party. I wasn't the biggest piss head in the group. I wasn't the most sober person in the group. I was at all the parties, but never. <laughs> look, we've lost Mick. She's going to have Pinocchio in her mind for the next 20 minutes. The little wooden boy. Like, oh, the little wooden boy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that with my hands. <laughs> like I'm a puppet. A puppet. I'm just a little, little puppy with a wooden nose. I promise. I promise. I never lied to you. <laughs> anyway, but what I did like, I think, is embodying the party boy on a night out. So if I was on a night out and I was in a nightclub and I was off my nut, I enjoyed that feeling of being like looking like the party boy. So just playing the role oh, interesting. for a short period of time. Because you thought out. that was cooler. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. So even if you're not a party boy, you think that the person that is bringing the party is cool. So yeah. people maybe did think that about me. Yeah. Okay, I interesting. Reckon. But I think I think people will be able to relate to that and go, I know deep down that I'm not. But right. it's fun to be it sometimes. Okay. To step into the shoes of someone that is every now yeah. and then and go big on a night out or go, go out six nights in a row. I'm like, whoa, maybe I am this party person. The closest thing I ever came to actually being what we're calling a party boy um, was when I first moved to Australia. And I think there's something about, and you've had it as well with traveling or moving abroad, when there's basically no consequences to your actions because mm. you don't know loads of people. So if you want to go and sleep around, no one's going to find out unless you tell people. If you want to get pissed every day or you want to create a new identity for yourself because yes. you're the other side of the world, you can do it. Yep. So I was working part time. I sofa hopped for like three or four months when I first moved here. And I was going out as much as I wanted and just living it up. I was like, mm. this is what you, you know, it was January. It's miserable in England. I'm in a different country. Like, I've all everything's exciting. I'm mm. going to say yes to everything and go for it. Um, so that was probably the closest I've been to actually being a party boy. And I enjoyed it. Like, I okay. really, those, those were some of the best months I've had here because it was just like, fuck it. Yeah, you know, it's not often you feel completely in like nothing I do has consequences when you're in your late 20s rather than earlier. I have a question about that. Yeah. That fuck it button, do you think it only comes close to you when you're perhaps feeling a little bit lonely? I don't know if it's loneliness that I was feeling. I, I reckon the element of like maybe a bit of lost, um, quite a lot of freedom though. Like okay. I, I think I've always been overly aware of the consequences of my actions. Okay, so it's... And, you know, I was literally... Because like, it was short term. Po yeah, possibly. Mm. When I was in England, I was living in my parents' house, mm. right? It, it, like the most extreme version of freedom is moving yeah. to the other side of the world, sofa hopping, you know no one. So I think it was, and also I was a bit lost. So I think it's probably lots of different things. Mm. I wouldn't say lonely, like, although I'm sure people go out lots when they are lonely because yeah. surround yourself with people, that's the opposite of loneliness. And also you meet more people and things like that. Yeah. Like I definitely drank more when I was traveling on my own because that was just how I met people yeah. in bars. Oh, yeah, Without a doubt. What did you think party girls were growing up? Did you avoid them or did you think they were pretty cool? When I was young, I thought they were cool because they'd be the ones that would like smoke and drink younger than the rest of us. A lot of them had older siblings, get their hands on booze or ciggies or drugs. Oh, yeah. So I remember thinking like they were cool with that label, like party girl that like drinks and smokes and does drugs younger than the rest of us comes this like, oh, they also hook up with loads of people. Yeah. The party girl in my growing up years, they were the ones that hooked up with everyone. So when you're like 15, 16, that's cool. I was like, whoa, they're, they're, they've had sex. I, I have not had sex. Oh, my God, as a and parent they, now. Like, oh, my God, imagine. Oh, imagine you find out your awful, daughter. Yeah, awful. Not cool. So right. I remember thinking I was like an equal parts, scared of them, but also wanted them to be my friends. Okay. Because they were like the cool ones, the yep. party animals. Like, I want to be friends with the party animals. But interestingly, the more that I've grown up, the more it's become apparent to me that those girls were the ones covering up insecurities. Like those girls are the ones that are still partying, that may now have problems of addiction, that are often are like still not quite settled, like not in relationships, not in a career they're particularly enjoying, like mm. not totally happy in themselves. Because they were going through something, perhaps. I think so. Yeah. I don't think it's a coincidence that all of the party girls that I knew growing up and are still somewhere lost in that identity. The reason I was a party girl was because of the situation that happened to me at school where I'd lost my best yeah. friends and therefore I didn't care about myself anymore and I went full into party and mm -hmm. entertaining everyone and trying to make new friends. So I was definitely going through something during my worst partying stage. I like those girls. It's, it's like party girl or party boy. Like the core of that is an insecurity. It's that like any addiction. Is, we don't right? we don't look at the addiction. You need to look at the reason why. Mm -hmm. And that's the same with this party girl image. Look at the reason why these people are acting out. 
Yeah. And if you solve that issue, like I did by going to therapy many, many years later, yeah. I solved the issue. Well, because anyone who's looking to have an identity and is struggling to find one then gets the age where booze and drugs are available to you. Like, bang, there's yeah. an identity. It's, yeah. there, it's yours for the taking. So true. All you've got to do is do the booze and drugs. Yeah. And then you're the party animal. That has more positive connotations when you're a teenager or in your 20s than negative. So grab it. Yeah, you know, that's what people are doing. I that's reckon. what people do. I yeah. totally agree. So you can hear from these that we both thought being the party person was the best at the time. Perhaps not marriage material, but generally we thought we were good time girls or good time boys, Hamish. So what's wrong with it? So, yes. Yeah, so what are the downsides we both experienced of being party animals? I think it was just my crazy behaviour in general, Hamish. I remember I snogged a married man at yeah. a Christmas party when I worked at the Millennium Bug Company. Where, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. What the hell is the Millennium Bug Company? <laughs> you know about the Millennium Bug? No. Okay, so when the Millennium was turning over, oh, there, the there was computers. I worked yeah. for a Millennium Bug Company, which was a con, I think. Yeah. They sold software to fix it. Thousands, thousands. You've never told this story. Oh, yeah. And also the, the manager, my boss, one day at the Christmas party, bought in a prostitute <laughs> on a lead and spanked her in front of the office. What? Yeah. That is that I is need to talk strong. to you about that. Except I'll tell you that whole story another time. But that was a very weird time. How long did you work for them? Oh, a couple of years. Did the company go down on the 2nd of January yeah, 2000? Shut down. Yeah, <laughs> Crazy. I lost jobs. So oh. these are just results from me being a party girl. I thought people in nightclub toilets were my best friends. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling alone when I realised they weren't the mm. next day, going, oh my God, I've ne never, we'll see that person again. Of course, terrible hangovers, unfulfilling sexual escapades, inner sadness because I thought that's all I had going on for me. I know I wanted more out of life, but couldn't see a way out. I was embarrassed. I had a loss of identity and self-worth, uh, which caused me shame. Injuries, drunken arguments with boyfriends, toxic long-term partner, which I've told you about before. Yeah. I made myself a target. I made myself vulnerable from being a party girl because people didn't treat me with kindness because they thought, oh, she's just off her head. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what she thinks. Were you aware of these downsides at the time, though? No. That's what I reckon. I, we don't know it at the I time. I didn't know it. Yeah. I didn't know you that. You just think, oh, yeah, I'm like I, I had unsatisfying sexual experts yeah that's not a big deal when you're in in the midst of it well i actually thought that i was in control of the situation mm -hmm. i thought oh, i'm just a woman i'm a f you know i'm a female like this sexual revolution it's the ladette culture yeah. i'm on top of this i sleep with people because i want to yeah. whereas in fact i was drunk and vulnerable and i slept with anybody who wanted to sleep yeah, with me yeah, yeah. my th my thoughts and emotions didn't come into the equation mm -hmm. i had a habit of pretending nothing was important which of course led to my low self-esteem i know you were never a problem drinking Hamish but did you ever feel like being the party boy was a bit annoying so what I feel like is that I knew deep down at my core that this wasn't who I was you know being a party boy is someone that is reckless yep and I know that no matter how much I went out or partied or whatever I was doing fundamentally I am not reckless great I do worry about my consequences my actions I do think more than probably the, your average reckless party boy like I was you know, thinking about the future and careers and I wanted to be in relationships. Like all of those things yeah. were on my mind. So I guess like I sort of knew that I was lying to myself in a way. So you're self-conscious yeah. about your behaviour. Yeah. yeah. And I can remember when I was like that sort of age, women not wanting to hook up with me, but telling me, your great husband material. Yes. And I remember at the time, like, that oh, sucks. Cheers, yeah. I wish you just wanted to hook up with me because yeah. I want to hook up with you. But I, I can remember thinking, fuck, I would, you know, like the party boys get the girls. Yes. Like the reckless, I don't give a fuck ones that just booze and drink and like are drugs. Like they're the ones that hook up with the girls because they don't care about life and that's cool. Yeah. And I was like, I am not that person. And as a result, I'm not hooking up with any of the girls. In your family growing up, did your parents, like in my family, like the more outrageous the story, the more outrageous the drunken story, mm -hmm. the more kudos you got, the more respect you right. got, like the more funnier you were. And it was like pat on the back, well done for being yeah. so drunk and so funny. Did you have any no, of that growing up? No. Yeah, that's I've the difference, I think. I've never told a story to my parents about me being drunk. Okay. Because they would just worry or... Yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be received well for me to go. I was so drunk last night that X happened. Yeah, I think I think there'd be there'd be judgment. 
Like yeah. a lot of some of my friends that know my parents well, my brother's friends will tell a story like that, and actually they find it funny. Yeah, but I think only funny because it's not their child. I reckon. Yeah, I think I did. They didn't find it funny when I was a kid, but as I grew older, our kind of family crazy parties and things. It, whoever had the most outrageous story the next day, we all laughed along with them about it. There wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like pointing out as as being naughty or silly. It was more like oh. That was pretty funny, and and, yeah. and we love you more. <laughs> <laughs> so me, yeah, when I was at uni, I lived in a in a house of like yeah, my closest friends to this day. But we were certainly the party house. Like oh. it was an open door policy. It was house parties every single night, and I can remember by the end I was over it. Right, because right. I, I, my bedroom was the one above the sitting room where the parties were. Oh, with the and dripping was, with the I, dripping ceiling. Well, that was my third year I was in okay, that one. Wow. That, yeah, that was next to the party room. God, they don't get the, any better student my, accommodations, do they? Well, same house. Oh. We lived in the same house two years, even though they had, yeah, oh. the walls would, would leak out of the shower. So it, it sort of became too much for me. Yeah. So I was kind of fortunate in that I, I was in a relationship with a girl who was at Durham Uni, yeah. which was the, if you know Newcastle and Durham, they're like two opposite sides of a uh, seesaw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Newcastle was party. Did the little wooden boy find it hard <laughs> to get the train on his own? The train and you'd head off to Durham. <laughs> go to sleep very early. Can I have a ticket to Durham, please? <laughs> so yeah, I would run away to Durham quite a lot. Yeah. Um, because I, it, it was too much for me, and I was, you know, I wanted to do well in my degree, and I was, like, I can't carpentry. <laughs> <laughs> So I sort of I sort of got over it by the end. I think for me, by the end of that time, or yeah, by the end of my sort of drinking days, I realised that I can be the weirdest person in the room without booze and drugs. Okay, that's and good. And that it was really what gave me a buzz. So I get a bigger buzz out of being like that weird, wacky guy than being the drunkest person on the most drugs. Okay. And that was enough. That's a good place to be, I think, mm. knowing that about yourself at a young age. I wanted to have a quick chat here, which is a good point to have it, about maturity and responsibility. Okay. I feel much more mature and responsible um, nowadays, of course. Having responsibilities makes me feel more functional and useful. When I was a party girl, I had nothing to cling on to. So it meant I could just do what I wanted, which looking back was a bit selfish of me. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about anyone else. I just thought about me having a good time and that was about it. There was an article, I just read it this week, so I wanted to add this on here. It was on a comedy website, Cracked, and it defines maturity as becoming the tap instead of the bucket. Some of you may understand this analogy right away. Those who don't need to only think of the relationship between those two things. The tap fills the bucket with water while the bucket does nothing but receive it. The bucket does not give water back to the tap, but this does not prevent the tap from performing its function. Can you understand that, okay, Hamish? I think, I think I'm following. But the bucket's only... Okay. A bucket is a person who does little but takes what others have to give. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it? Yeah. A tap is a person who provides for others even then when they receive uh, nothing I'm in return. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we should probably have a um, little chat here about the term bucket fanny, Hamish. Yeah, I'm not familiar with it. Is this relevant? The little bottom wooden <laughs> boy's got a bucket fanny. Uh, oh, now let's get on with our very serious sobriety podcast Vic what did you think would happen if you hung up your feather boa did you think your world would fall apart if you quit being the reliable party girl I couldn't have ever done it Hamish yeah. because I, that was the only thing I was and the only thing I was good at I liked it and it meant people liked me so I thought mm -hmm. but I'm questioning that now after what you've said about party girls I did not know a normal human being lived inside my body I know that sounds strange, but I literally had no idea that I could be normal and not have drugs and booze inside me. And I think that made me scared to get to know myself. Uh, I thought I might hate myself. I mm -hmm. thought I'd just be boring and what would be the point in living if I wasn't creating a party wherever I went? Because, of course, I hated people that didn't drink. Mm -hmm. So therefore, why would I become one of those? It was so ingrained in me that I just didn't see it was like a, a closed window. Did you think about this? Like, I'm often accused of not of being passive and not thinking deeply enough about stuff. Did you think the day I need to go sober, like, I need to give up alcohol? Okay, you obviously had that thought. Were you also thinking, okay, if I do that, I'm no longer 
this list of identities that I have been in the past. And that is too big a thought for me to give up Party Girl, to give up Life and Soul, to give up all of those things as well. Yes. Really? So yes. you thought about all of that the day you thought, I need to give up alcohol. Yeah, because I didn't yeah. know. I had no idea who I was without it. And I think the day that I decided to give up, I was like, right, I'm going to find out. I'm yeah. going to find out who I am, what I'm made of. Not only is alcohol causing me anxiety, it's causing me to lose myself and I don't know who I am. And perhaps there is another person inside me that has more to them. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find that out. So that is really the scary thing for a lot of people in giving up alcohol is it's so much more than just giving up alcohol. It's it is so much more. It's completely giving up every, so many identities you've had before related to alcohol and trying to find new ones. And if you can see that as an adventure yeah. rather than a negative point, mm -hmm. rather than I'm losing stuff, think of it as things that you're going to gain from that. That's what I changed my mindset. I had done drinking. Yeah. I had done the party girl. I was over it. It wasn't working for me. It wasn't making anything good happen. As you can hear from all of the stories I've just told you, it wasn't having any positive effect on my life. And it got to a point where I had to search out who I was beneath that persona it's clear from what we've just talked about that being a party girl is not all it's cracked up to be and sometimes people decide to drink through the problems they've created and a vicious circle of addiction begins being the one with the backstage passes becomes being the one with anxiety and a dependence on the old fun drug yeah it's true that it can turn into something much more serious when you're a party girl. I've never had backstage passes. You, you backstage. No, passes you had backstage passes once, for Fat Boy I mean, Slim. That was a one time. Yeah, I used before? to always have backstage passes. So I worked at the. This is such an insight into how sad my life is. Yeah. I worked at the Queensland Garden Expo. Oh yeah. This weekend, and they gave me a VIP pass, and oh, I. Yes wore it for more of the day than I needed to because I was getting a pass out of having like backstage passes to the Queensland Garden Expo. That is really it's the first sad. Time since it's Fat Boy Slim. VIP mate, VIP. VIP mate. Oh my God. Free, free fizzy drinks and free uh, fruit I got. Oh, I like a bit of free fruit. On tap. Free fruit. Yeah. I stole quite a lot and handed it out to my friends. Did came. you? Yeah, don't worry mate, I'll sort you out. I'll Do you want a out. banana? Coke no sugar. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so what happens when a cheeky line and a cheeky reputation slips into an issue? Let's have a little chat here, Hamish. I think it's important to have a talk about identity. I identified as a drinker, which I guess gave me a reputation of being a party girl. They're like the evil twins from The Shining, aren't they, Hamish? Yeah. That was nothing more, nothing less. That was who I was, a drinker, a boozer. So what did this mean for my own opinion of myself? Okay, so identity formation involves three key tasks. Discovering and developing one's potential, choosing one's purpose in life, and finding opportunities to exercise that potential and purpose. That's exactly what I was saying about my purpose when I was a party girl. Mm -hmm. I didn't have one. There we have it. Everything I never did. Really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> because alcohol drowned out all of the above. I had no idea who I was. I had no purpose. Couldn't see my potential. Alcohol sucked my potential out of me. It bogged me and stunted my development. Therefore, I was lost and drank more because I had no idea what to do. These two words, reputation and identity, seem to be becoming a little more entwined as we go on. If you don't have identity, there is a chance you might drink because you feel lost and then gain a reputation. Yep, it seems one leads to another. A downward spiral of loss of self-worth and perhaps a little winky, dwinky problem. A little winky, dwinky, bingy problem. Yes, yeah. So you did it, Vic. I'm a year in and we are both happier than ever without alcohol. I know so many people out there listening to this who will think that they can't live without drinking or break free from their reputation of always being the local propped up at the bar. But we're here to tell you that your reputation as the fun boozer is probably only doing you damage. Yep, and breaking free, finding out who's underneath this facade is not only fascinating, it's exciting. You don't have to be that person for anyone. You can just do you. What, masturbate? Not masturbate. Oh. No, not do yourself. <laughs> like, be yourself, Hamish. The wooden boy's naughty today. Oh, masturbate my nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your nose that's growing, wooden boy. <laughs> Your trousers have gone funny. Are you, are you happy to see me? We've just got Pinocchio in your pants. <laughs> so how do they do it? How do you be, How do you get brave enough to leave behind everything you thought you knew about yourself and become someone you've probably always detested? Yeah. A boring, sober loser. Oh, God, yeah. 
So here are some tips on how to free yourself from the reputation that's having a negative impact on you. These are some things that we go over quite a lot in Sober Awkward. Yeah. So we are sorry to be repetitive, but they're all such good points. And I need to hear something maybe 20 times before I actually take action. So okay. I don't feel guilty about repeating ourselves. Here. Okay. The first one is to journal about your self-perception. Mm -hmm. Interesting point. If you hear that your reputation is bad, ask yourself... What did you do or not do? Has your attitude changed since these actions? How do you feel about yourself? So one thing I did when I got um, sober or when I was having therapy, Hamish, was write down a list of things that I'd done in my past. And I think it's an AA thing as well. Mm -hmm. You write down just a list of things that you feel a bit uncomfortable about, like me drinking that vodka yeah. out of that bottle that day or just some you know, risk taking and things. And I wrote down a list and I looked at the list and it was much worse than Santa's naughty list, Hamish. Really? And I looked at it and I thought, who is this person staring back at me? That's not who I think I am. The person staring back at me on the page was a complete lunatic. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while, but I wrote next to each word, not okay. And I realised that my behaviour had not been okay for years. And it was really helpful to see it in black and white, all of the things that I'd done wrong and then realised that they were just damaging myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting exercise that hmm. you have taken too far and now put it on a podcast and now yeah. everyone knows everything that you wrote down that day, probably. <laughs> Your list would be so short compared to oh, mine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot my shoes at someone's house. You'd be like, finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like there for days on end writing everything down. I can't remember, I can't imagine how big the book is that you wrote. Yeah. It's like the Bible. Yeah, it is. It is. Bu War points. and peace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> War and piss. Uh, ask for, oh, that would be a your second book. It's my second book, War, War and Piss. Piss. Yeah. That is fantastic. Thank you. I just thought about that. No one steal that idea. That's no one steal that. Copyright it. Uh, it's probably already a thing, isn't it? Probably. Ask friends and family for feedback and help. Your loved ones can offer crucial perspectives on your personality and reputation. Are you annoying or funny when you drink? Have mm. they heard negative opinions about you? Do people view you as you imagined? Probably not. No. I love that one as well because I never even thought about asking. I just presumed that everybody thought I was funny, which is not the case yeah. since your I found out. Your mates were worried. They were worried. Yeah. yeah. Evaluate your relationships. Look at who your friends are. Do they help or hurt your reputation? If they contribute to your bad reputation, maybe it's time to seek new friends. Mm -hmm. Plan your future self. Decide who you want to be. Set a clear goal of how you want people to feel or think about you. What is most important to you about how others view you? Yeah, that is an interesting point because do we care how others well, view that's us? What that I was going to say that, that can is be a question. bit of a slippery slope. Yeah, because actually I think that's wrong. Plan your future self. Okay, set goals of how you want to be. But if people don't like the way that you change or the way that you mature when you give up drinking, well, that's up to them, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So don't don't evolve yourself on the basis of someone else how they see you. Yeah. But you could use. I advice it's advice. a bad thing to worry about what others think about you clearly yep. but you could use it as a good instigator to change your actions yes you know i want to be perceived as a sober go-getter whether or not people think that of you you could use that as the fuel to fire your change of actions careful wooden boy you don't want to use fire to not fuel your actions no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to lose you wooden boy <laughs> Um, get therapy, of course, we're always going to say that. Find out why you drink in the first place. Unpack the party animal. Yes. Test going out without alcohol. Yes, that is going to be difficult for a party animal, but you might be surprised. We loved it. We, 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 were, love we it. were gurning at Fatboy Slim. We were. No boot or yeah, drugs. Yeah, we were gurning like maniacs. <laughs> Question your reputation. Is it really who you want to be? Move. That's what I did. Well, I put that one in there because I moved yeah. when I was struggling with my alcohol intake and it was actually one of the best things I ever did yeah. because I didn't have a reputation up here. Yeah. People didn't know me as a party girl and I was able to slow down and that's actually very soon after I started to seek help for my drinking because I realised that these people don't know me yet they like me mm. and I'm not getting absolutely wasted every time I meet them. So there's something going on here. It's It nudged me yeah. into going, well, maybe I don't need alcohol because I've got friends that don't expect me to drink. It can go one of two ways though because I know I've gone back to the first episode of this podcast to get our shorts for Thursdays Yeah, and Lucy moved to Australia thinking new location, new environment, we won't be drinkers. 
but they brought the drinking with them. Yeah. Um, new hobbies, of course. We always bang on about those, don't we, Hamish? Yeah, we You've do. got to fill that space that you're not being the party animal in with more positive stuff that's nice to yourself. Choose a date and decide that is the day when you leave that person behind and step into a new you, a healthier person with lots of interesting escapades in their past. So, Vic, you were worried that no longer being a party girl would ruin your life. Has it ruined your life? No. Isn't that strange? Imagine if you said yes. Yeah, yes, it ruined my life. <laughs> yes, it I hate has. it. I hate myself. <laughs> no, of course, being a party girl, I, it just does not appeal to me. I can't imagine anything worse mm-hmm. than having that burden upon my shoulders. The responsibility of keeping everybody happy and bringing the party, it seems totally overwhelming to me now. Giving up my reputation was like being freed from jail. Yeah. I, I was freed from jail once. <laughs> It didn't <laughs> quite similar, feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> my identity, as I said, was a real burden and that's gone now. It's like a weight's lifted off my shoulders. I'm much happier. I'm glad to have shed that skin mm-hmm. and grown new wings, Hamish. I like being an example and proof that people can change. Yeah. If I can do it, anybody can. Mm-hmm. I saw that this wasn't working for me. And if you're feeling like that too, you just have to take the steps, whatever they are for you, and take the steps to change. I don't want a good reputation anymore either. I'd rather have none at all. I can't disappoint anyone then. So I don't want any sort of reputation. I just want just to be known as Vic and she's all right. That'll do me. Yeah, I feel the same way as you on that, the last point. You know, the idea that if we can do it, anyone can. As a party boy or a party girl, you're really not changing anyone's lives. Hmm. You know, you're ruining yours probably in the long term. And yeah, you're, you're a good time person. Doing what we do now, you and I being sober, I'm not saying we're changing lives, but we've certainly had people reach out to us who says it's inspiring. Yep. You know, even just our friends or our family or husband or people that listen to the podcast. Like that is an identity you want to have. Like, yeah. You can change someone's life. You can change one person's life. That would be enough. And I feel like in your sobriety it's a lot easier to do it than when you're a party girl. It doesn't matter where your drinking sits on this vast spectrum, whether you're a party girl or an extreme drinker or a normal drinker. It is worth taking a look at it yeah. and reconsidering it and even having a year off and saying, like, what, what else out there? That's what I did in the end. I said, mm-hmm. what else is there for me apart from this, apart from doing this one thing that we always do? Just try it. That's it. I think no one wants to be only a party boy or a party girl. You mm. want to find other identities to be. Yeah. I definitely don't miss being the party boy. I think maybe just knowing the person that I was, if I'd given up my early 20s, I think I would have missed it. Mm. Um, but there are far better people than me than giving up in their 20s and don't. I quite like the fact that I'm a husband and a dad now. I do something with my job that I hope will help others. And those are more identities that I want to be associated with. I think no one wants to be only one thing. Mm. Really, you want to be six identities, yeah. all of which you're proud of. And being a party girl is, or a party boy is too small, I think, for me. Yes, yeah, too small a world, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I agree. Some reputations can be destructive. They can weigh you down for a long time. But we're here to tell you that just because you've always been one thing, it doesn't mean you can't morph into something else entirely. You just have to find the right tools and the right support. A reputation does not have to define who you are forever. You can change, just like sobriety doesn't. It can be part of you, part of who you once were, but it doesn't have to be all of you. You can evolve and grow. You can change your identity. We don't mean go and buy a fake moustache and a trench coat and call yourself Steve. (laughs) We just mean you can become someone completely different, good different, someone with purpose and potential, a functional party animal that goes to bed early and likes herself in the morning. It really is achievable. Having a kind of personality rebirth sounds hard, but the first step to accomplish it is to give up alcohol. Once this wall has been dealt with and torn down, a whole new world awaits you on the other side. Seeking out healthier ways to live and socialise will allow you to find out who you really are and you will have loads more opportunities and chances to find out what truly makes you happy. Long-term happy, not short-lived, drunk and high happy. That's what sobriety is all about. The long-term joy over the short-term lifestyle. But like I said, you're still a party girl in my eyes. Part of me is quite glad that you say that I still throw a good party, but the mental torment of me throwing a party is too much nowadays. Like it's very overwhelming. Being sober at a party can feel quite exhausting sometimes. So I think especially when you're organising one, you can't leave. Mm -hmm. I do like going to other people's parties so that I can do a runner when I feel overwhelmed. Yeah, when it's your own one, you can't really Yes, I'm not not at a stage now where I want to host a party. Yes, yeah. I don't know if that's got anything to do with my sobriety. I just don't want 
lots of people in my house running around. I, just, oh. I can't deal with the stress of it. Oh, is that why you don't invite us around then? Because of my annoying three kids. Your kids would tear my house they apart. Would. I'm okay And you've got a it. white couch. That, well, there. I, I worry more for Liz. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be okay with your kids coming over. Liz would have panic attacks. Last time we went to some one of your friends' house, they had a beautiful minimalist house. Do you remember? Yeah. And what did Freddie do? I think he put a, a jam donut down the wall or something. Yeah. Yeah. There was panic. Yes. We left feeling slightly embarrassed. No. <laughs> That's life. That's life. Kids. Sorry about my children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that the little wooden boy is here with us yes. again, feeling happy. I'll b- I'll back to my box now. Come on, let's put you away. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. How did it get to that? (laughs) If you're questioning your relationship with booze, you're struggling to moderate, or your hangovers are causing anxiety, it might be time to reach out for some support. Yeah, just talk to a mate about how you're feeling, contact a local doctor, find an AA or sobriety group. Vic's got one. Yeah, just head to www.cuppa.community. Remember, if you're questioning yourself, it might be time to seek support. Even though this journey can be awkward, it is definitely worth it. And if you've enjoyed the Sober Awkward podcast, don't forget to review it, rate it and share it with your mates. Do they have to share it with their mates? Yeah, of course they do. I'm not doing this for nothing, Amish. Bloody hell. How do they share it?